Hi there, in my last video um, I tried to get this little uh, Jerry Howell V-Twin running and uh, it was as dead as a dodo really and uh, following on from that I've carried out various tests um, and in this video I'll show you what I found uh, what I did to rectify the problems and uh, we'll see if we can uh, get it to run Now during my testing I thought there was an issue with compression because what you should do on what you should feel with these engines is you should feel some sort of like pushback when it's getting to top of stroke um, and you know you should see it bounce back like that on both cylinders if you can find the top of that one there so um, I, I wasn't getting that it was pretty much free uh, easy to move and uh, that led me to first of all start looking at the cylinder heads so in trying to uh, diagnose the problem with cylinder number one um, I decided to take it off the engine and um, put this little uh, adapter on so I can hook it up to the compressor and when I did there was loads of air coming out of the, um, the carburetor and that actually showed that um, the valve wasn't seated correctly um, so un under pressure I moved the valve a lot and uh, it eventually sealed so I'm, I'm guessing there's been a little grain of something underneath the seat and that's blown away now and um, there's nothing coming out of there when it's under high pressure so I'm reasonably confident that the valves are okay now so hopefully this will be able to uh, suck fuel in as opposed to uh, blowing it out <laughs> and just for the record for cylinder number one ten psi I put my tongue on any of the inlet or outlet ports I can't feel any air coming out twenty psi Thirty PSI. That's about thirty two PSI. And if I turn it off, that gauge is not moving. So it's holding its own in terms of uh, not letting any air out. So I'm really happy with uh, that result. So what I'll do is I'll put this head back on and uh, I'll take the other one off just to do a bit of a sanity check on that as well. So this is cylinder number two under compression and it's uh, holding its own at 30 psi. Um, however, if I put my tongue against the exhaust inlet I can just feel a small amount of air coming out very small amount uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, recut that to, well not recut it I'm going to lap that uh, valve seat and see if I can improve the situation Now having uh, relapsed the intake valves, um, I still wasn't 100% uh, um, happy. Um, there was a very, very, very small amount of air leaking through the valve seats. Um, but I was getting good compression, so I thought I'd leave that and uh, sort of carry on with further tests because if, if that proves to be a problem going forward, I'm going to have to... Uh, 
check out the valve guides. They're made out of, I think, uh, mild steel, which I, I thought was a bit strange, to be honest. And uh, if push comes to shove, I'll uh, put, I'll make some more, some uh, phosphor bronze ones. But for now, I thought I'd leave it. And I uh, reassembled everything. And uh, I then found that um, when under compression, I could see air coming out of uh, this area here where the carb fits, not the manifold. So I used some of this um, gasket maker stuff. And that seemed to uh, sort that problem out. But uh, I, I, was, I, I still had no compression really. And uh, I, st I start thinking, well, you know, is it me uh, pistons and cylinders? Because, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of checked those pretty well um, when I was building it. And uh, I'll show you a bit of video of, uh, where I uh, tested that out uh, more recently. I've just checked the compression very roughly uh, with my hand over the um, cylinder just to check that the piston rings are good. I mean, that's really good compression. Uh, so I'm happy everything's okay there. I mean, that'll run in anyway over time. But uh, there's certainly some decent compression there. So having ironed out um, piston uh, piston rings um, and uh, cylinders has been a problem, that only left me really with a couple of areas, and that would be um, spark plug holes leaking air, which uh, I put some WD-40 around. I couldn't see any air coming out, but uh, yeah, it was still freewheeling pretty much. And then I thought, well, the only, the only other thing it could be is the seal between the cylinder head and the cylinder. Now the drawing suggests that you don't use anything um, uh, between the two. Uh, you just bolt them together and away you go. And I wasn't really happy with that. So I made some sort of like fairly thin paper gaskets, but uh, I was just wondering whether or not that was you know, not working right. So what I decided to do is to take the heads off again and uh, put some more of this gasket maker on, um, onto the gaskets that I'd made. I left those overnight and uh, sure enough afterwards I was getting some good kickback. Um, so I thought, well, you know, that's uh, a step in the right direction for sure. And, uh, I made a linkage for the carbs to make life a little bit easier. I mean, these need balancing out a little bit, I think. And uh, further tests, I, I could only get it firing on, on this cylinder. This one dead as a dodo. And uh, I just couldn't work it out. And I was swapping the units around and wondering if it's the hall sensors and all that type of stuff. And I eventually found that the batteries in uh, that unit for cylinder one were slightly on the low side. So I replaced the batteries and hey ho, I get a spark every time now. Um, so having uh, gone through all of that process, I thought it was about time to uh, give it a try. Oh, and the other thing I did was, when I was uh, trying to test this, I was uh, using a nut locked onto the other nut that was holding this flywheel on. And with it rotating anti-clockwise, the nut kept coming off. So I made this little bit of a fixture here. Uh, so I can just fit the drill on there. It spins it. Once it gets up to speed, it just pops out. Hey! Hey! It's got 
life in it. As you can see I just hooked up a temporary uh, crankcase breather, quite a bit of oil coming out of somewhere. <laughs> I think that's coming out of the breather to be honest. Um, but it's certainly got some life in it and uh, seems to want to rev high, which is good. So uh, it looks like I just need to uh, tweak around with the carburation and, uh, and the ignition. So uh, happy with that. Well, I must say I was uh, starting to get worried for, for a while there. <laughs> I thought I'd never get this engine running. Uh, but thanks to everybody, the help and support and advice, uh, it really did help me. And I also look back on some uh, videos I made when I uh, made the uh, Hoglet V-Twin. And uh, I also maintained sort of build notes. And I looked at the build notes and they sort of helped me. Um, sort of, well, they reminded me what I did to um, work through the troubleshooting on the Hoglet because I had similar problems with Hoglet. Albeit that there weren't the same problems, but I uh, troubled it, it enabled me to troubleshoot it in the same way. And uh, you know, it's the usual stuff, isn't it? It's uh, carburetion, sort of timing, um, your ignition, uh, fuel compression, that type of stuff. You can get all those things working together. Uh, you usually get a running engine and uh, it does want to run. <laughs> uh, it seems to want to run very, very high revs. Um, it'll run at low revs uh, for a period, uh, but not for very long. So it just needs tweaking here and there. Um, the, the Jerry Howell cars have got two jets on them. There's one jet for uh, low rev running and the other jet for higher rev running. So I need to sort of like mess around with those and uh, probably tweak the timing a little bit. I ended up uh, setting the timing um, round about, well, between 30 and 25 degrees before top dead centre on the compression stroke. And that seems to be sort of like quite a nice spot. But again, that needs to be fiddled around a, with a little bit. Uh, but at least it runs, which is the main thing. Uh, and it's a big relief. So what, what I need to do now is um, sort out the uh, oil, <laughs> the oil leak. Um, it's more like a Royal Enfield, isn't it? They used to call them Royal Oil Fields, didn't they, in the time? Um, but anyway, I'm sure I'll be able to sort that out. Then I need to put it on a base. I need to hide the electronics. I need to rethink uh, whether or not I'm going to follow Jerry Howell's uh, design for the fuel level um, because he holds that in the crankcase breather sort of like a little reservoir I think uh, that's how it works and you've got a pump in the bottom which pumps fuel out of a tank in the bottom up into the reservoir now I've absolutely no idea how you go about doing that so if anybody's done it and they want to share their uh, sort of experience, I'd really appreciate it if they could uh, contact me. 
Uh, what, what I also would like to do is to um, put an electric starter motor on it um, and again hide that in the base uh, and just be able to start it at the flick of a switch but again I have no idea how you'd go about that so again if anybody's sort of any experience of that I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, point me in the right direction um, what else have I got to say about it um, Probably not a lot, really. Um, so, like I say, I'm uh, I'm pretty much over the moon with it, and uh, I think I'll be able to sleep tonight, which is good. Uh, but anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you later.